Meanwhile, with us on the broadcast is Major Mohammad Ali Shah, defense expert. Uh, good morning, sir, and thank you so much for speaking to us on News X. Now, what has endured PTI Chief Imran Khan to the masses? Why is the ele election army's electoral coup finding it so difficult to get rid of the PTI Suprema, who's in fact fought this entire election from jail? And you know, if the army had to, you know, take some action, what would it resolve to? Let's in fact not forget uh, what happened to two-time Pakistani Prime Minister Benazir Bhutto. Right, Asavari, Asavari, that's a very, very good question. Now, in fact, uh, why only Benazir Bhutto, her father and also Zulfikar Ali Khan, uh, Zulfikar Ali Bhutto. In fact, he was brought in by the Pakistan military. Uh, General Ayub Khan had got him into power. And later on, he was assassinated. Rather, I would say, I would say he was hanged uh, through a high court order to legitimize uh, his killing. And uh, so that's what had happened to that, the fate he had met. In fact, if you see even Nawaz Sharif, right now he was much in the news for signing up for elections. Uh, General uh, um, uh, uh, from Pakistan only had got him into power. The Pakistan military had got him. And the very fact is, again, he had to leave Pakistan thanks to the Pakistan military. And he, he ran away for uh, seeing that he is citing a three-week uh, status. General Ziaul Haq uh, had got him into power, but then he was the, the, the finance minister of Pro Punjab province of Pakistan in 1983 as well. So he already was a seasoned politician when he came to power. So he had to run away. Now, uh, we, the, we, have had, we have seen in 1951 the assassination of Liaquat Ali Khan, who was the first prime minister of Pakistan, because the fate he had met. So we have had instances. So it's very sad and unfortunate one should be seeing these things. But then Imran Khan, whoever it would be, Imran Khan, Pakistan military would be left with little choice. Imagine being in jail and being a challenge for you. What more can you do? What is it beyond jail then? It is, uh, as I have already hinted enough, their previous head of states have been assassinated by Pakistan military itself. Why? Because they were, the, they were a nuisance to uh, Pakistan military, to Pakistan government. Pakistan government is who? The Pakistan military. All the orders, all the decisions, everything what to be done comes from Rawalpindi, where the uh, Pakistan military headquarters are. Not from Islamabad, where the politicians reside, where their headquarters are. No. So the very fact is, as uh, Professor Nalapat rightly said, it's not uh, an election commission of Pakistan, it's a selection commission of Pakistan. They've already selected, they've already made up their mind, they've already decided what's to be done, who's going to take on the reins thereafter. And whoever it would be, it would be a puppet to the Pakistan military. Anyone who dares to go against the Pakistan military, bears, uh, he meets with a very, very bad fate. We can see what happened to Pakistan and Mushra Bibi, they are in jail. But yet, Jamil Hathayke bhi bo bhaari paada hai. It's a joke. So anything can happen in Pakistan and anything is possible there. Any kind of a circus, any kind of drama, any kind of entertainment, well will you see in a country where the ex-Prime Minister is dragged off by a scholar, by rangers, and they're, they're, they're taken away when he had gone to the court to, uh, to, uh, to, 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 for bail. But no, so in Pakistan, it is all a hogwash. It's not just a formality, it's a scam. If, uh, if I may rather say further, it's uh, they're fooling people. See, in, I'll just quickly conclude by saying, Asavari, in India, whenever there are elections, we look forward to the black mark on a nail and we put on Facebook, on Twitter, I have voted, have you. So there is excitement. But here, what excitement would it be? When the people know, when the Awam knows that they are being fooled by their third-rate politicians. So it is all a big hogwash, a big scam, a big uh, scam. And if I would say spam for all the viewers watching them, I would say that a summary. Madhali Shah, defense experts are proposing the same question to you. What's next as far as the governance of Pakistan is concerned? You know, it's a country that is drowning in debt and liabilities. There's corruption, terrorism and other major problems. In your assessment, who should be the nodal person to even make an attempt to bring some sort of a solution to these problems? 
See, yes, I agree. The very factors, as uh, Dr. Sharad Kohli rightly said, that you know the awam, the janta, the public, the normal person in, in Pakistan, you can see on the screen in fact how they are behaving. The poor thing, and I, it is really uh, saddening because the who suffers at the end of the day? It is when the leadership is poor, when the when in a train in a bogey in in a train when the front bogey or the engine itself is weak we can see the entire train can be jeopardized similarly in pakistan it is this actually if you ask me i will tell you there's no one i'll say ke koi kisi se kaam nahi hai sab sab ek hi vardi ke chote batte hain they all same be it imran khan be it nawaz sharif be it shahbaz sharif they all chota badmash so the very fact is whoever comes to power in pakistan whoever is respective is going to make his people suffer ultimately so there is no one who is clean over there and this is the state which we which we are seeing right now on the screen this is a state of the normal public when there were floods in pakistan it is their uh, leadership again they could have i am not saying floods are national calamity but when they the national calamity there is a way of controlling it there is a way of uh, dealing with it when our prime minister had just tweeted that he uh, expresses concern for the people of pakistan that his uh, magnanimity Shabazz Sharif was the first one to tweet Twitter. He was sitting on Twitter waiting for our Prime Minister's tweet to come in, the notification to come in, and he tweeted immediately that we do not wish any help from India. Who offered them help in the first place? We only offered them emotional support, condolences. We only offered them that that we we we, are, we, we feel bad for you, but no, they are the first ones to be self-destructive. So they do not need an external enemy to destroy them. Sorry, they. Are self-sufficient. They are atmanirbhar. They are self-reliant. They are on their own. They are atmanirbhar thought of being self-destructive. Uh, We are self-reliant. They are self-destructive. So that is itself their own. But now, how does it come from? How can they be so self-destructive because of their leadership? Their poor leadership. They will guide the way, and the people over there. I am surprised they were all getting fooled all this while. Now they have. Started to rise up and stand up against the atrocities on them, against the military, which has ruled the roost over there in Baluchistan. You see, people want to reunite with India. In fact, and that's a golden thing. Whether India should accept them or not, that's a different story altogether. But the very fact is, there is trouble happening in Pakistan. They are uh, civil wars in Sindh province of Pakistan just last last year. An IG, a serving IG, was picked up by the Pakistan military from a hotel room. Never. Heard of such a thing happening anywhere else? So the very fact is, there is going to be more trouble. I see. Unfortunately, I see more trouble for Pakistan because or there is no firm leadership to hold the reins and guide them the right way. As I'm reading. All right, uh, sir. With that, I'd like to thank you for joining us on the broadcast and sharing your perspectives with our viewers.